Guess who's back? Uh, <laughs> so, I know it's been a minute, but I am back. I'm working on easing myself into making these videos again, and I have lots of plans for you. But the first thing that I wanted to do was talk about some stuff that I've been testing out and trying to use for the longest time, and it has been quite the roller coaster for me. So, without any further ado, let's get right into this thing. I picked up the Insta360 Go 2 when it first came out. I never got the Go 1 because with the video quality of it, uh, it seemed like a solution that was just for like ultra micros, like maybe even like almost tiny whoop size. And then um, that you would put an HD camera on and be like, yeah, I got HD footage. And just you're happy that you were able to get HD footage from something that small. With the release of the Insta360 Go 2, and I saw that it was doing 2.7K, and I heard it had awesome stabilization, and all of these ridiculous things, I was like, that might be the perfect camera for like small FPV things. So I picked one of these guys up on day one. I was out in San Diego, went to Newbie Drone, got it from them, and I've been playing with it ever since. But I have had, one heck of a time. I'm not gonna go into an in-depth review of this camera. If you wanna see that, there's like a million channels that have done it because this thing has been out for a minute. So I'm not gonna talk about the sweet charging case, even though it is pretty sweet. I'm not gonna talk about the fact that it's a little vloggy tripod thing, also sweet. Or the remote control, like so many of these features are awesome and they work really well, but I'm gonna talk to you guys about how I've been using it, the issues that I've had and some of the solutions that I've found and kind of where I think that this is gonna fit into my videos, production, all the things going forward from here. So let's dive right in. When I got this guy, I was first picking up the Newbie Drone Whirly Gig. If you're not familiar, it's Newbie Drone's own four inch long range, basically that Dave C uh, four inch long range type design build. And uh, I got this guy and I fell in love with it um, after flying it for, I got this and the Savage Bee, I think is their three inch, all at the same time. I got the Savage B and this, and after flying it, I was like, okay, I need an HD camera for these. These are freaking awesome. I went back and I got the Insta360. Now my very first Insta360, I had tons of issues with, from the stabilization to this weird anomalous thing. I'll show a little clip of it where I was getting like a horizontal bar of like gray and black pixels that would show up intermittently. It was totally unpredictable. It was a pain in the butt. I had a bad copy. Um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna call Insta360 out. You guys do not have the easiest customer service to deal with. It was a royal pain going back and forth. What firmware are you on? What are you doing? Here's the footage. Like, well, did you do this? Are you doing that? Like. I'm like, it's a bad copy, just give me a new one. And then I sent it in and they said, oh, we got it and it's working fine. I'm like, well, send me the video footage of it working fine. And they were like, oh yeah, 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 we're gonna send you a new one. And I was like, finally. So it, there were a lot of hoops to jump through and it took me a long time to get this camera back and working as it should have been from day one in the first place. But once I got it working as it should have been, I've been really happy with how it performs at, with like all the little clips and the, magnetic thing, necklace thing. Um, they're, they're awesome. I have used it quite a, I used it when my daughter was born as some of like my our own personal videos, like in the hospital and everything. I've used it going to the lake, going to the pool, going to all sorts of fun things, put it on the hat cam. You got this really easy to use head mounted cam, lots of really cool uses for the Insta 360 go. But what you guys are probably interested in is how is it for FPV? And that's where I got into like the second wave of issues. If your tune is not perfect, if the light is too bright and too harsh and you don't have the ND filter on, you are gonna have jello. The I've had better results with this uh the mount on my whirly gig because as I'll show you in a minute when I put the uh, the go in here, it still wobbles a little bit left to right, giving it some physical uh, vibration isolation, right? Uh, it works pretty well. There are some scenarios where I get jello, where I get wonkiness, the stabilization, the flow state when it horizon levels, I'm not a huge fan of. When it's in FPV mode, as they put it, it looks good if you're not being aggressive, but if you're trying to do freestyle with this thing, you're gonna wanna just turn off all the stabilization and let it go. We'll do some samples in a minute. 
but where I ran into trouble was I was not a fan of the height of this because I don't have the same like Best Buy or good to go multiple uh, versions of this you know just get a new one if I smash it so I didn't like how the lens is like way up here and I was wanting to uh, get a horizontally designed mount so I had um, newbie drone designed me one this is the one they designed and I printed off forgive the ugliness of this print it's got awful but it worked the only issue that I had is that that increased the amount of jello the amount of vibration issues that I had in this and so I went back to this mount, that's been fine. The second drone I've been flying the Insta360 GO 2 on is the ProTech 25. I love this thing. This thing freaking rips. I know that there is the new Emax, blah, 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 blah. I'm interested in getting one, but I can't like buy this for 300 and buy that for 300. Emax, you know, if you want me to uh, try it out, hit me up. But uh, I got, I've been flying the GO. This thing is awesome for flying around people, for it. <sighs> without a camera on it it freaking rips it's not going to do like crazy punch outs over stuff and big dive recoveries but for doing proximity and just going fast it is a lot of fun now the first mount that i did for the uh for the protect 25 is this guy right here and as you notice it's very hard mounted and i had a ton of uh, jello a ton of vibration issues to the point that this footage was not even usable now uh, as time went on, I kept tweaking it. I get, this is not as well tuned of a setup as that four inch is overall. When you par start doing prop guards, wonkiness ensues. I've thought about removing the prop guards, but for where I fly, and a lot of times I'll put this up in the office and annoy people, um, I don't want to take the prop guards off as a permanent solution. So I kind of refined that um, that mount. At first I went like three little uh, supports wide. Now I'm down to two so that it has a little bit of room to uh, do some isolation in there. And I'm getting decent results. Are they, is it great? No. If I wanted to go really slow and do your cinematic, like pass through a building, I could do it with this guy. If I wanted to go fast and rip and turn uh, but like stabilization off, I think that I can get some good results. So without any more talking about all of my experience, let's just get to the flying and then we'll come back and talk about some, some conclusions. All right, here we go. All right, so the first pack that I'm gonna fly here is gonna be on the ProTec 25, and I'm gonna try to get in some proxy flying with probably over here on the playground. I'm gonna uh, do some weaving in and out of the trees, maybe mess with the awning at this school, but just give you guys an idea of how the footage from this system is gonna look. Uh, we'll run through and post some different options with stabilization, whether you're doing the full-on, I think it's flow state, or the FPV mode, but we'll get into that a little bit later. All right. Let's go here. All right. Oh yeah, before I go, for all you beeper lovers, what in the? I need to take it apart to rip the beeper out. That is the most annoying thing about this whole setup. It takes forever for this to get a connection. It beeps till it's got the connection. It beeps when it's low on battery. It beeps when the gyro stabilizes. It beeps when it arms. It beeps when it disarms. Like, oh my freaking God. If you can't just find a drone off of motor beep alone in that case, or, or like DFing to the drone, then you've, you've got a problem, okay? That's, that's my two cents, that's all. All right, so as you may have noted from that, the Protec 25 is quite loud. We'll do some nice smooth cruising over here. Ah, uh, flies on my leg. All right, so enough smooth cruising. Let's power loop. Oh God. All right, let's power live again. All right, so we'll do a little bit of... I don't really think that this system, the ProTec 25 is not gonna replace your five inch. I'm just flying it like I would a five inch at this spot and showing you that yes, it can do this type of flying, right? 
All right, let's power loop again. All right, so we'll do a little bit of... I don't really think that this system, the ProTech 25 is not gonna replace your five inch. I'm just flying it like I would a five inch at this spot and showing you that yes, it can do this type of flying, right? Now, what you'll notice is that there's probably some issues with the video here, whether it is uh, jello or just a little bit of wonkiness when we're trying to get really aggressive on the sticks. It doesn't always know what it is that you're trying to do. But if you turn off all stabilization, it actually does quite good. All right, let's do a little cruise up by the, uh, the pavilion. We'll do like what you might do with a Cinewhoop style drone like this. Unfortunately, I don't have any cool things to chase like people on skateboards. Or, I don't know, motorcycles. We got a nice sunset though. Let's take it underneath the school bus. The ProTech 25 with a flat mounted Insta360 go to definitely can get under some things. Like, if you wanted to do some cruising and revealing of a place, this is a pretty sweet setup for that. All right, video is starting to break up. I'm not really pointed the right way. Protect 25 is beeping for mercy. These batteries do not last that long. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to bring it in. We're at like 13 something. All right, we're gonna move it to a new location to show you a nice long range uh, example of how this system performs on the four inch whirly gig. Now, we may get into some extra locations. Depending on the lighting, I think we're right at sunset, so we might not be seeing any of that jello. And if I'm not, that is fan freaking tastic. I would love to have that be the case. But uh, just from all of the tests that I've done so far, I don't really expect it to be that. Okay, so we got a different location here. This is a field that I like to come to whenever I'm trying to do just some long range cruising. There's not a ton of mountains here in North Carolina, at least the part that I'm in. So it, it, it's a good spot for testing these long range cruise type flights. So we're gonna squeeze one in before sunset and let you guys see what that looks like with the four inch whirly gig. All right, let's get going. And now I'm not gonna try to do anything really frisky with this guy. I'm just gonna be cruising it as you would with a long range setup. I didn't let, I didn't let it sit long enough to get a GPS lock before I uh, took off. So we're gonna be without all of the nice GPS features. Let's take it in through the woods a little bit here. Play a little bit risky. All right. Oh my God, I literally have bugs in my ear, on my arm. All right. I have found us. 20 seconds. Come ripping by the car. Hello, honey. Let's do some cruising over these. We definitely do not want to go down in this. That would be difficult to find. I hope that doesn't turn into some type of foreshadowing. Hey, sweetie. Yeah. How much to my right do I need to turn? Am Ten. I facing the sunset? Nine. Eight. 
eight, seven, six, five, four. Sensor lost, three. Sensor lost, two. One, telemetry lost. Oh yeah, we are way out there. Whew, okay. That battery is close enough to done. Do a little flip and roll on this guy. Now, this whirly gig, just so that you're aware, it, I mean, you can do freestyle with it. It's not, you know, the most uh, punchy drone ever, but you know, it'll power loop. So if, if you gotta do it on a four inch, this'll do it with this Insta360 Go 2. Like I said, the footage is not gonna be the best. You got a lot of oscillations there. A little prop wash. Oh my God. Got a mosquito on my ear. All right. And on that note, I am bringing her into land. I am tired of getting eaten up. So my thoughts on the Insta360 Go 2 for FPV. Th this camera for like family things, action-y things, like just being able to throw it on magnets to anywhere in the room, it's amazing. When you put it on a mini quad, it gets a little bit more, I don't know. I need to get some of the ND filters for it. I'm not gonna lie. If I wanna fly this thing in the middle of the day, it needs the ND filters. I'm hoping that we're not having a lot of jello showing up in this footage. So once I got all of my footage over to the computer and started editing, I was still noticing a lot of the weird anomalies. Not necessarily all of the jello that I had with the earlier mount on the Protect 25. That is mostly gone, but there are still these weird stabilization artifacts that I pointed out when I was flying into the sun and they looked really obvious to me when I was editing at home on my 27 inch uh, like monitor but here in the hotel I was editing on this computer and it's much harder to see that so if you've been watching this video on a cell phone you're probably like what is he talking about all this footage looks great and so I think that really points to what is this camera good for? If you're recording to post to Instagram, I think you're gonna be good to go. If you're recording to post to anything that's consumed on the go, it's good. If you're trying to record to be for a client, I wouldn't be using this in like a commercial application. But I think that I can continue to use the ProTech 25 and the Whirly Gig with a uh, Insta360 Go To on it for most of my purposes because let's face it most of you guys are watching these videos on your phone right now uh, not on a big 27 inch screen or TV etc if you see a little bit of weirdness on the horizon in some of my upcoming videos it's probably because I'm using that insta 360 go to uh, so yeah back to me in the field and I'll let myself wrap it up there all right bye there's just a lot of caveats as to whether or not this is gonna be usable for your needs. Are you, if you're trying to replace this on a five inch, I was really excited when I first got it about doing something like the, uh, oh my gods, what is it, the 250? Like, I was like, dude, this is the perfect camera for that. It is really cool. However, the stabilization is just not there like the Hero 8. If you want to do like the top tier Cinewhoop stuff, I still think that the GoPro is gonna be a better option with something like Real Steady. If you wanna get all the way down into like super small form factor, like there's a, definitely a sweet spot for this, but you can't use it in all use cases. I wouldn't do it if I was doing anything really acro -y. I would only do it on a very well-tuned quad that's not giving you a lot of oscillations, that you're not flying it in an aggressive manner where you're running into prop wash, that you are doing some very straightforward flying with it. Uh, in that scenario, with the right ND filter, the right lighting, it's gonna be great. But there's so many caveats, I wanna just be able to throw a camera on a drone, go do what I wanna do, and know that I've got footage from it. And if that's your goal, then I still think that the GoPro series of cameras is a better option. Now, 
I'm gonna continue using this Insta360 Go. I'm gonna continue using it as a hat cam. I'm gonna continue, possibly even use it as a stick cam some. I'm gonna use it for B-roll, like sliding in and out of my bags, because let's face it, there are not many cameras this small. I can put this guy on a stick and put it in my bag, pull it out of my bag to give you like B-roll shots, where it's like I'm pulling the goggles out and then you see the perspective, you know, you get the idea. There's gonna be lots of cool shots that I can get with this camera that I just can't get with anything else. Are those shots gonna be FPV? Probably not. At, after my experience with this camera, I'm now starting to look at setting myself up with a naked Hero 8, whether I'm gonna do one of the off the shelf, like the new GEPRC option, or the SMOK, I don't know how you say that, um, but you know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna be doing another option for an HD camera on ultralight setups because I really like this four inch long range rig. As you saw here, I'm just able to go forever. It's not the most like picturesque environment that I have uh, here with me today, but there are places, I, I do a lot of traveling, and there's spots that I can hit where I can get really cool shots with this setup that I can't necessarily do with anything else. So I want a camera option for that, and it's probably gonna be a naked GoPro. So yeah, that's my two cents on the Insta360 Go 2. Let me know in the comments what you think. Have you got one of these cameras? Have you tried it out? Have you been frustrated like I have? Uh, and have you found solutions that I am still missing out on? Is there a secret firmware out there? Like hook me up, uh, let me know. Let's get some better footage on this guy because I love the form factor and I really, really, really want to love this camera. I just can't. Uh, so that's it. Hit that like button, subscribe, do all the things. Let me know in the comments. I am back. I'm gonna be working on getting the videos coming to you guys regularly. I bought my own Mambo and 69 from TBS. Those are coming in the mail. I'm gonna be doing videos on those as soon as they come in. So if you're not already subscribed, this is your first time here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around for more content. We will see you soon. Later.